Hey, what's up, everybody? We have a new YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave a comment on the video. Share it with your friends. It's also a podcast. Three and out. Wherever you listen with me, John Middlecoff, Apple, Spotify, we have you covered. As well as thevolume.com. We have merch. Check out. I got three and out hats right now. Thevolume.com. Search the podcast. Buy some merch. Back at it again with my main man who is healthy, heading into the playoffs. I have not talked to him since I got really bold. We we worked Sark, the Washington Huskies, and then we lost the national championship, but I was in the casino, Stucky, on Friday, and my buddy's like, uh, you know, they have these DraftKings casinos. They have these, like, live. They're almost like a uh, – it's like a big video game, but it's all gambling. It's incredible. It has all the odds. It's it's like a massive smartphone. And I live bet Chris Kirk in the golf tournament, 35 bucks, won me almost $1,100. It's, it's one of the great live bet $35 that I think is humanly possible. I mean, I don't think you get those returns if you got as an early investor in Uber. So uh, I'm feeling good heading into the weekend. And I, I'm leaning, I'm leaning Rams looking at the board, but I, I'm, I'm yet to be uh solidified in my mindset and this week's it's one of those that's easy to think chalky 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 uh and obviously we always historically have seen some weird shit happen right yeah well but first of all did you dump did you i know you went all in on washington in the semis did you double up or what happened you- was i took i took eight grand into the casino i pushed out I, I at first i was going to put it all on the money line and then i'm like this is kind of stupid they're giving you some points so I took four grand plus four, hit three grand money line. So I, I immediately won right away. And then I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to bet on them to win this game, I think they're going to be in the national championship. Everyone was basically two to one. They were seven to one. I'm like, well, I might as well sprinkle on seven to one. So I had just all gravy seven to one ticket. Fundamentally, don't believe in hedging it, unless it's like going to change my life. If I had $100,000, I would have thrown 50. But for $1,000 that was already profited, I was like, fuck it, I'll let it ride. And it was clear early we were in a little trouble. <laughs> but uh, the, the right team won. The right team won. But I, I stand by 7-1 to one odds with an NFL quarterback. I, I do think the Washington was a little not properly valued in the operation. Do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I agree. They – and look, I mean, their run defense cleaned it up in the second half. And, Pen, and Penix was – he, you know, he just was a little off. He was now, bad. Michigan was yeah, getting was pressure, which – they no Washington give up pressure all year to anybody. Uh, their offensive line had their worst day. I mean, you saw the their tackles were getting beat, which they haven't getting beat all year. And Michigan's secondary is actually really good there. And but still, look, it was a seven point game late in the third. I know. McCarthy scrambles on that third and long, backed up in his own ten. They get to midfield punt it instead of Washington starting to mid- midfield. They start their own ten, and then you have that. And I had no dog in the fight. I had the under. You had that hold. They think they both teams got away with a number of holds, and then you call that hold uh, on that long pass, which was such a big swing in the game. And then, really, the only explosive pass he hit all game. Yeah. So I think the right team won, but that was a, a very questionable call. And despite the start, Washington did make some good adjustments in the in their run defense, and they still had a shot. But uh, I think Michigan was the rightful winner. But yeah, you had a good I think the, seven to one. I, I think the the Michigan D lineman. They said this during the game, and I read it after. Had said because Michigan had won the Joe Moore Award the last two years, and Washington won it this year. Like, let's put the award on the table, <laughs> basically going into this game. And I thought they got fucking worked. I mean, the guard and center. There were a couple of plays where Washington's guards were elevated on yeah. their back. Yeah, you know, so it, it was. You know, I understand Penix has been a big reason why they haven't been sacked. He's just kind of a natural in the pocket. He's got a good feel. But when you have NFL D linemen that are guys that are going to get drafted just in your grill immediately, I mean, I, I don't care if you're Peyton Manning. Like, he was he was getting peppered. And, and Michigan has the corners that most teams don't that they can Boy, play exactly. a little tighter. So you, you're not just going to have wide open guys right away that you can one read off to. So Well, number two's an NFL guy, and he was going around with the Dunesay the whole time. And even th- those guys had some moments where they were open. Penix, I, honestly, he just, you know, that that's a game. I, I was anointing him after the Texas game. Texas defense kind of stinks beside their D line. That's a game that's the Michigan's more like an NFL team, and I understand if I was a GM, I'd be a little concerned 
two things. One, as you hit him, he was all over the place. And two, one knock is like the health. Like the Oregon game, when you pepper him, it feels like he's not going to be able to get up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was getting – same deal. Remember Oregon and Seattle? It was like, are they going to have to carry him like uh, Byron Leftwich? Same – I was like, God, is he, is he going to make it through this game? Well, he has two past knee injuries. He's a little older, too. So there's definitely going to be some reservations uh, from NFL GMs. I'll be curious to see where. I go 20s. I bet when the dust settles, 20s. Yeah. He's not going to fall to like pick 50, but he's probably not going to go in the top 10 ish. But I could see like the Vikings, maybe. Exactly. Sean Payton. Yeah. You know, get rid of the ball fast, accurate. Yeah, those the, the the guy. There was a lot of NFL talent, but let's uh, let's get to the National Football League. Uh, since I talked to you last, the Bills officially own the Dolphins, which we saw coming about five weeks ago. Pretty crazy that when Ty Dunn wrote that article, uh, it felt like God that their season's falling apart. Are they going to fire Sean McDermott? The building was on fire. I don't think they ever lost after that. I mean, they were. Think about this, Sucky. They were six and six. The Eagles were ten and one, and they both finished with the same record. That's yeah. pretty nuts. It, it insane. <laughs> they caught fire at the right time. They were a bit unlucky too, early in the season in close games, and you know they had that loss in overtime to the Eagles, and everything was there for the formula was there, and uh, they added like the, the, what happened with Buffalo is they started off okay, and they hit like this. Injuries, six, yeah. Six game skid. They had a lot of defensive injuries. Lost Milano, Trey White. They went out and signed Rasul Douglas. He's been massive. One of the best. He's been one of the best cornerbacks by some of the advanced metrics in the NFL. He's really solidified the D. You know, they made some schematic changes. Some of the guys who were getting more reps obviously adjusted, got better. They got Daquan Jones back now. Um, so we'll see if I think Rasul Douglas is going to play this week. This. I will say that historically double digit favorites in the NFL playoffs are a good bet. People don't want to bet. Everyone wants to bet the double digit underdog in underdog. the NFL playoffs, yeah. right? But generally there's a reason why uh, a team is a double digit favorite since 2010, double digit favorites in the NFL are 11 and four against the spread. I, th- the reason this game is there and, and for what it's worth, this applies to four games. Now this is just, a trend it doesn't, you know, I don't, I, I think every situation is unique, but inexperienced quarterbacks historically, so quarterbacks making their first playoff start against a quarterback who has playoff experience, who has already started a playoff game in their spare career are 17, 35 and one against the spread 32.7%, 17, 36 straight up. So just a straight up record. And if you look at their numbers, even some of the most elite quarterbacks in the NFL in NFL history, their first playoff game. Peyton Manning, whoever. Yeah, has really just been poor statistically, even, you know, especially if it's on the road. So I don't think that's Stroud. So we're talking Stroud to uh, Mason Rudolph. And Jordan Love. Now, I don't necessarily think that applies. Like, Love is playing so well. Stroud seems different. And Love and Stroud have kind of been playing. Like, Stroud played in a playoff game last week on the road uh, against the Colts. Same, Same with Love. Same with Love. Yeah, and love the yeah the past couple of weeks uh, has been playing in playoff games, and they're playing at a different level. I th- you know the, the these quarterbacks who don't have much experience, who aren't great, and they're going on the road uh, in these in co- bad conditions. Now, what makes this game very difficult to handicap now because I would lean Buffalo here is the weather. So you could have as of right now that's it's five we're five days out from sunday when the game is but we could have i think last night in buffalo there was 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts i think as of right now it's projected to be like 30 which is extremely detrimental to offense to kicking to which is why you've seen this to- this total has come down to like 35 and a half so it's difficult to lay 10 in a game where the total is 30 how, co- how co- when you're t- wind gusts and how cold are we talking like 20s are we talking 20 so the low 20s <laughs> and yeah so it's kind of like i i like now the steelers just want to run the ball this is kind of like steeler weather um like they wouldn't want to get go on a fast track against the bills so we also could get snow 
So yeah, there, I have to watch the weather here. I would lean Buffalo. I just think, look, the, if you look at the Steelers' defensive splits without Watt over the years, they are drastic, and he's just a huge loss on that defense. They also have so many other missing pieces on the back end. They've had a lot of linebacker injuries. We'll see if Minka Fitzpatrick can come he's back. He's been banged up all year. Yeah, their safeties, you know, their corners aren't great, but I think Buffalo can really take advantage over the middle of the field. And even if there is win, now there's a point where win just kills everybody. Now, even I do you remember that game? There was a, I think it was a Thursday or Sunday game against the Patriots when the Bills played the Patriots, and it was Mac like, Jones threw it three times. Yeah, that that game. It was it was Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football. You could still see Allen made some throws. He's a quarterback that you know much more than Mason Rudolph, but much more than most quarterbacks in the NFL that can actually deal with those conditions. He has the arm strength. His legs will be huge in this game. Just him running it. There's going to be designed runs for him. But there is a point where like. It's so windy yeah. and the conditions are so bad depending on the snow that both teams are just going to be hand, handing it off and the game becomes so ugly that I couldn't like 10 in a playoff game. Like the, he just takes one broken Steelers runner, you know, like we saw against the Ravens last week, you just get a slant and you're Steelers gone. Steelers been running the ball better second half of the season. I mean, Najee's been, listen, I'm not the biggest Najee Harris fan. He's looked good. I, yeah. I'd say when I've watched him the last couple of weeks, obviously Warren, explosive player so like you said if it gets to a point where it's has vibes of that monday night game 10 point you under Can't no like circumstances 10. can you not take plus 10 yep agreed so as of right now that's just a wait and see for me i gotta see how bad the weather is and with the lake effect like this happens this can happen in cleveland too it's it can be so bad out of nowhere uh but it also could change for the better so five days out, it's just too hard to say. But if this was, you know, if the conditions aren't too bad, it's hard for me to see Pittsburgh keeping up with Buffalo. I mean, this is a Pittsburgh team. Look, they beat the Seahawks, who were ah, faded into oblivion at the end of the year. They beat the all the Ravens' backups. They beat, you know, the Bengals with Jake Browning. But before then, they lost to the Colts by 17. They lost to the Pats at home. They lost to the Cardinals at home. So I think that where people are falling a little bit too much in love with Mason Rudolph. And I think his inexperience is going to show He'll probably make a couple of mistakes. And uh, I think that the bills are just peaking at the right time, but the conditions of the wild card. So as of right now, nothing for me there. I'm going to die on this Hill. This season's on now. Listen, I don't, I'm not acting like they would have made some run in the playoffs, but TJ Watt is hurt because they had to win that game. And they stuck with Trubisky so long in that situation. You remember on that Saturday game, when who you've been saying this, and I, I started noticing Indy's not good. I mean, what, as far as they came, it's more of a testament to me to their head coach. Like, yep. I don't view them as a good team. That's why we'll talk about Houston. I, I'm a little leery on them. But if he, like, he, remember when he brought in Mason Rudolph at the end of the Indy game with like two minutes left? It's like, Mike, have you been fucking watching what's going on out there? Why, how did you not go to the bullpen at halftime? So this yep. notion of that should have gone. It was clear to every his day, like, listen, your season's going down the drain. You might as well. He was so loyal to that guy, and it put him in a situation where they're playing all these backups, and their star, I mean, listen, if you tell me T.J. Watt is playing in a game that, like you said, gets windy, who knows? Shit gets weird. Like, he, he, we've seen, we literally saw T.J. Watt and Highsmith win them a game. Just yep. those two guys. So, I, they're yeah, going to be one and done. Game, he strip sacks. <laughs> yeah. Allen, Creates a fumble. Yeah. Picks off a screen. At the takes it 30 yards. I mean, it's this season to me is on Tomlin. And I, I'm not some like Tomlin hater. Obviously, he's a winning coach, but like this, like they shouldn't have been in that position last week. The, the Ravens weren't, you know, and and it was still listen, and I don't even care that it was a close game. Like, I get it. It was I don't judge you on backups, like whatever, but you had to play a guy that you that is like your quarterback and it fucked you. And yeah, so to me, like I'm with you. Uh, let's, okay, yeah, let's you, go. You go back to go back to those, the Cardinals and Pats, two win teams at home, back to back weeks. You can't lose Trubi both those Trubi games. Trubisky was, I think, the worst quarterback I saw this season. Yep, agreed. Who who makes like over a million dollars? Not like just some practice squad guy that gets elevated to play. I'm talking about a guy going into the season on the two deep. Yep, he, he was hideous. I agree. And clearly, they got some skill guys. Like if you can just function, you you, you can be decent. Well, let's start with the first game, Cleveland Houston. This is historically kind of the throwaway game. Cleveland's been an incredible story. They just have really good players. <laughs> they got a lot of momentum. 
They have a quarterback who's, you know, I get he throws it up for grabs, but like you said, he's been in a million playoff games. It's been a while, but and to me, Houston, to me, they're a team on the come. They have some major injuries. Those guys will be back next season. They have a ton of cap space. If they were a stock, I would bet on them. I do feel like I, I think this is going to be tough. <laughs> I, I think this is going to be tough. I mean, that defense, Jim Schwartz is, a, uh, to me, an elite coordinator. Uh, l- look at what Jim Schwartz did to Kyle earlier this season. He's comfortable against – I know the offense is a little different because CJ, can, to me, is more – they can do more stuff with him in the passing game than, than Kyle likes to do, but still, like – I like Cleveland in this game. I I would lean that way. I actually like I prefer the over. Historically, Wildcard Weekend, a lot of unders, but those are mostly outdoor games. Past 20 years, wildcard unders 51 and 35. But indoors, overs have gone 11 and 8. So a lot of times you get weather conditions. These games tend to be lower scoring, but that's not necessarily the case indoors on a fast track. So I like this over for a couple of reasons. The Cle The Cleveland offense, since Flacco's taken over, they're averaging over 28 points per game. They've gone from a bottom five pass explosive offense to a top five. And they are just, they're using tempo. And they're, Savancy's just letting Flacco drop back and throw it all over the field. Chuck it. I mean, this is a a pass first, pass heavy, pass all the time offense. And that's how you want to attack Houston. Houston's run D, pretty good. Their pass D is not. And now you have Jimmy Ward, one of their other guys, Thomas on IR. This and this Houston defense, which I mean, the Houston pass defense was not good. They're they finished 20th in EPA per play against the pass, like top five against the run. Stefanski's a smart coach. I think Cleveland's gonna come out, they're gonna start chucking it. And here's a crazy stat this Houston defense, they faced one, if you just look at EPA per play, one top 10 offense all season, and that was Baltimore in week one when they lost uh, 25 to eight and Baltimore was in the first game of a new system. They still gave up 25 points. They haven't faced a top 10 offense since week one. They've only faced two others in the top 13 Tampa. It was not, you look at their offense and you're not like, Oh, this is some world renowned offense. Tampa put up. That was that, that was that crazy. That was that crazy shootout. And then Cincy who put up 30 on them. So they've been roasted by any offense with a pulse. Here are the other offenses that they faced. The Titans twice, the Jags twice, the Colts twice, the Steelers, Falcons, Jets, Broncos, Cardinals, Panthers, Saints, and Browns, who are bottom five overall, but they're not with Flacco. And Flacco in this offense a month ago in the same stadium put up 36. And for what it's worth, the Browns on the road this year, 8-0 to the over, covering by 15 points per game. Their defense is good, but there's also some injuries. They have injuries on the defensive line at safety, Walker at linebacker. So they're not fully healthy. And the defense just isn't as dominant as it is at home with that crowd. And they just seem to play at a different level at home. They're giving up on the road this year. They're giving up 30 points per game on the road, even against Case Keenum. The Texans still got the 22, but almost everybody on the road against the Browns has gotten the 24 or more. So, and I think Houston, they're going to, I think the Stroud's going to chuck it downfield. He might make some mistakes, same with Flacco. So there could be some turnovers in this game, but I think there's going to be a lot of explosive passing plays. You can get that. You can get a few of them against the Browns and aggressive defense. And that's what you want with an over. You want explosive passing plays. Uh, I think the Browns are going to come out. They're going to be able to take advantage of this Houston defense, which is not good, especially in the secondary. And they just haven't faced many competent passing attacks. And when they have, they've been destroyed fast track indoors. I'm a little hesitant about Stroud just because like it's his first playoff start. But like I said, he was in a playoff game basically last week. Their receivers overall, Noah Brown, uh, Robert Woods, they should be a little bit healthier. Still no tank Dell, but uh, I like the over there, but I, I don't mind your Browns bet backing. Uh, you convinced me. I, 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 I'm with you. You're right. The Browns, when you notice, you know, I, I didn't have the exact number, but when you watch them on the road, they, they are dramatically different than when they're at home. This is just a great, you know, sometimes, I mean, this game, it's been like Raiders, Bengals, once Raiders, Texans, one time with like uh, Matt McGloin. I mean, there have been some really, really shitty Saturday afternoon on this weekend. This is a really good Saturday afternoon game. Like, it, it'd be much. hard for the NFL to get better than this, actually, I think. Don't you? I agree. Yeah, I think this is the eighth <laughs> Texans playoff game, and all eight have been on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> 
<laughs> which was funny. I feel this and maybe a CJ Stroud. I guess Deshaun played in one against the Bills that was really good. Remember yeah. that play? Yeah. They did like uh, some crazy pitch play. I forget if it was the Bills or the Texans. They got tackled. Texans, it was like Chiefs, remember? maybe? No, it, Texans Bills was definitely Saturday afternoon. Like I think Josh's first playoff, first time they made the yes, playoffs. Yes, 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 you're right. And it, it was a really, really entertaining game. Yeah. Deshaun and DeAndre Hopkins were going nuts. And yeah. So that, that might be the best ever. This has a chance to be in that world. Okay. I'm sure you got the stat. I mean, I, listen, you live in warm weather. I, I live in warm weather. It, it, there's just no way to get ready for the cold. You know, <laughs> like when you said those numbers with the bills about the wind and the cold, I mean, I can't, it makes me fucking quiver. So Miami going to Kansas city, which it's supposed to be frigid, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is th- these guys. One, this team is not even dependent. Like, some of their previous teams, like some of the Rodgers Packers team, on scoring a lot of points to be successful to win games, and two, their guys now, especially their core guys, have just been living in Kansas City for a long time. So I, the advantage there is, I, it's unquantifiable to me. I mean, be just and and then you factor in, well, what is Miami? Well, they got a big arm quarterback. Nope, they got a guy with a lollipop. So I mean, I, I, four and a half. That that number feels a little. I dare you to take it, but I, I just – there's not a team I like less this weekend than the Miami Dolphins, to be honest with you. Yeah, Miami in cold weather games under 40 degrees. It's 2017, 0-9 straight up, 2-7 and seven <laughs> against the spread. Well, historically, post-Marino, it's awful. Now they've yeah. had some shitty quarterbacks, but – And it's supposed to be like one degree – I think it was one uh, the last I checked. So what, would that, I have to, what would I have to pay you to attend that game? Uh, no, no, no big jacket. Just like, uh, I'll give you a long sleeve, but it's like a dry fit or t-shirt level long sleeve. Could you survive? No, there's no amount of money. I'm not, I'm not going, I'm passing. Are you not a bit. Are you not a guy in the cold either? No. I don't like the cold. No. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not a cold guy. Uh, so right now, zero, zero is the projection. Um, I think what's it at night? Yeah. We're going to be at like zero degrees and who knows what it feels like. There could be some wind too. The problem with this game is not only is the weather an advantage for Kansas city. It's the fact that they rested last week and Miami went out, had to fight their ass off and still lost the division. And they got, they have so many more injuries. I mean, this team is beat up. They are signing Bruce Urban. Uh, They were signing, you know, Justin Houston, guys off the street that come play edge. They have no one left. They're li- they lost two linebackers. Their safeties both got hurt. I mean, everyone got – Xavier Howard's still out. Ramsey got banged up. I mean, it, it is a mess. Waddle, I think he's going to play. We'll see if he's 100%. Tyreek got banged up again. He's not 100%. He could limp off the field at any time. Two is a little banged up. Like – they're going to have Mostert back. So I assume that they're going to, you can run on the chiefs. So I assume that they're going to try to shorten the game and then just run with Mostert and uh, a chain and try to control the clock. And that's their path to success. And then just try to hit a couple of shots to Tyreek. I think that has to be the formula. Their defense right now is a shell of itself. Now, Vic Fangio doesn't really blitz much. Sits back to, hey, we don't want to give up a big play historically. But last week, they were down so many guys against Allen. He started just bringing the house. Like, they were like, we have no other choice. We have no one that can generate pressure. You got to remember, they already lost Chubb and Phillips. Um, yeah. They're two main edge rushers before last week. And they lost a couple other edge rushers, a couple linebackers. So, you, but you never want to blitz Mahomes. So, I, I'm curious to see how he plays this. Is he going to say... Because this Chiefs offense has not been good. It's not a team that I'm rushing. They can't. Ca- they can't catch the football. Yeah, the, the receivers have been bad. The, their tackles have been really bad. So I'm curious to see how does Fangio, you know, some of these old like they're literally signing guys off the street like, like, to come in and play this week. Some guys that were played with Fangio before, so at least they know the system. But how are they going to generate pressure? Mahomes is the last quarterback in the world you want to blitz, but they might not have any other choice. And they might just have to try to attack these tackles and then just say, look, your receivers stink and you're not going to, you know, this isn't, we're going to take Ramsey, put him on Kelsey 
and then we'll take our chances with you trying to hit the receivers. I don't know that. Or are they going to just sit back and say, your offense stinks and you're not going to move it, but they should be able to run it. I, I don't know. I kind of think they're going to blitz a little bit more. I like some Pacheco props. He's going to, uh, he's going to play. And I think he's going to play most of the game. And I think there's going to be, I like Pacheco receiving props. He's averaged like I think five and a half catches when uh, their other backs been out of the lineup and he is out again this week. So yeah, I couldn't play Miami here. This line opened Kansas city minus one and a half. So obviously Kansas city has taken a ton of money. Um, it's Mahomes at home in the cold. There, you said it. You here. said it opened what? Kansas City minus one and a half. Didn't it's last long. Been, Jesus, it sat minutes and then it was gone right to three, and then it's kept going. One and a half, I got. So, yeah, I I would I could only bet Kansas City here, but their offense has been so bad, and Miami might have success running it. So, um, this is probably a pass for me. I when I see. If I assume the Chiefs win this game, because I, I I'm with everyone that hammered them, they're gonna have a chance next week, assuming the Bills take care of business, in a weird way to go into Buffalo and be free. Like everyone's it's all the pressures on Buffalo, right? The, the, people think this is like the super flawed Kansas City team. If I was Buffalo, I'd rather be facing the Chiefs team that like, hey, we're all equals, everyone, we all got the same on the line. But the, the the Chiefs are going to get to go into Buffalo. Like, ah, oh, we're just fucking kind of playing with house money. People think, you know, our receivers suck, and this is our down year. I can see Buffalo getting a little tense. I mean, they were doing that against Miami. It's like, why are you guys – you guys feel tight. And then yeah. they loosen up as Josh starts running, and then they feel kind of freer, and they start kicking ass. But that that punt return, it felt like saved the Bills season. Now, they they had made the playoffs, right, because the, t- the Titans had taken care of business with the Jacks, so they, they didn't need to win to get in. Yeah, but they but, would have had to go to Miami again. They, yeah, they looked bad. Baltimore. They they looked off. Like they would have to go to they would have to beat Miami again and then go to Baltimore no matter what if they won that game in the divisional yeah. round. Instead, you host the Steelers and then you host another home game. I agree, it's kind of like a role reversal of the previous that yeah. thriller between the Bills and the Chiefs when the Bills went in there and I mean really should have beat them before. But... Yeah. Okay, uh Packers who I, I, I love the Packers last week. I didn't talk to you, but I thought the Bears were one of the biggest frauds. I mean, they were beating up on, like, the Arizona Cardinals and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's like, are you guys watching Justin Fields? He cannot throw from within the pocket. Justin yeah. Fields – or uh, Jordan Love is everything everyone on Twitter acts like Justin Fields is. And if, like, they were going to be – I don't care how shitty their defense is, Fields ain't lighting them up. And he didn't. And they won the game. Uh, listen – I don't like the Packers as much this week. Seven and a half is a pretty big number, but that defense against a uh, potent offense. I mean, I didn't, I thought the Cowboys were like going through the motions and they had 30 with their eyes closed against Washington, who I get it. One, two, three Cancun, but that number's a little high for me, but I, I do think this is a rough matchup for green Bay who is playing with house money. Incredible season. Somehow the bears have never had a quarterback. They just might've gone two hall of famers to another guy that looks like he's got a chance to be pretty good. I mean, it'd be if this guy truly is a good player. It's like the greatest stretch in sports history, isn't it? Yeah, to hit th- on three quarterbacks in a row like that would be uh, just stunning. Uh, yeah, I like the Packers here. I don't think that this should be. I mean, if this line was six and a half, I wouldn't. That's take a lot it. of points. I'm with you. But That's a lot of points. Seven and a half, I have to take it. Cowboys are going to get their points, but one of the reasons they're so good as a favorite generally is that once they get a lead. Then their pass rush, we've talked about this. Their pass rush gets yeah. going. They're opportunistic. But the Packers' offensive line can hold up here. Aaron Jones is fully healthy now. You can Looks run good. on Dallas a little bit. And they can protect Love. And Love is just – Love finished top five EPA among all quarterbacks after he ended the season. Since week 11, he's arguably been the best quarterback in the NFL. 18 touchdowns, one interception. 70 percent completion percentage 7.8 yards per attempt 0.26 epa per pass play over you know since that time only purdy has a higher epa since then yeah uh so i know you'd like and that. christian watson i mean has been injured right yep. i mean the most explosive they've had a lot of injuries of receiver it doesn't even matter who's come in jones also hasn't been fully healthy until the past couple of weeks but now he's fresh ready to go Look, you're going to hear a lot about the Cowboys at home this year. They're undefeated, but 
look, they here's who they beat: the Patriots, the Jets, the Giants, the Commanders, Eagles, the free falling Eagles. They beat the Rams, the Seahawks, and Lions had chances to beat them. The Lions should have, you know, with their with the refs get the call right. The Lions should have beat them. The Seahawks had the ball late with a chance to win. So it's not like they've you know they played a lot of bad teams, just inflated the score. I think the Packers are just love and that offense are firing on all cylinders and they're playing too well to get. And look, the Cowboys give up 14 late. That Green Bay can go down and get a touchdown and cover. But I think this will be a back and forth game. I think Dallas pulls it out, but I have to take the hook over seven. I also wouldn't be shocked. And, and for what it's worth, the, the Packers were four and five on the road, but all five losses were by four points or less. Um, so they have not. They've been in every game on the road all season. They even, you know, they blew out Detroit. They blew out Minnesota, blew out Chicago on the road. Three road division blowout wins. But I also wouldn't be shocked if Mike McCarthy makes some boneheaded in-game decision that costs the Cowboys points, which will only help the plus seven and a half here. So, um, and look, the, the Packers defense is bad, but Jair Alexander's at least back. Their run defense is worse than their pass D. And, but the Cowboys aren't really running it well. And if the Cowboys do decide to run it, Green Bay will say, great, that we're happy with that. So it's not the worst matchup for Green Bay's defense. Now, Dallas is going to score. They're at home. Their offense is elite. But yeah, I think CD Green Bay can, CD Lamb's a star. Yeah, CD Lamb's unbelievable. I, but I think Green Bay can keep this within a score. Okay, the night game. I, I uh, you know, Sunday, Sunday morning slate on week 18 was pretty shitty. So I, I had the four box on one TV, and I, I every time I looked over at the Lions in Minnesota because the game meant nothing, because uh, I just assumed Dallas was going to win in the afternoon, so the Lions were just stuck at three. There was a dude limping off the field, yeah. or like kind of holding his side. I, obviously, Laporta got seriously injured, but I, I swear to God, like every other snap, a dude was kind of it was it was crazy, and uh, I, I don't know where you stand, like. I, I, I thought I'm a I, I'm a Dan Campbell supporter for people calling me that I think he's clearly pretty solid, especially what he's done with Detroit. But that that was a little reckless for my liking. You know, I mean, the McVeighs and the Harbaugh's never would have done that. It, it's too. And I understand trying to get a guy a rookie record. Uh, McVeigh did it with Puka Nakua. And then yeah. I don't know if you saw the clip go viral, but he said, that's awesome. Get him out of there. Yeah. Right. So the moment you get something, you get the guy off the field. I I understand young players, but holy shit. So that Laporta injury to me, I, I understand gambling, like quarterbacks are truly the only guy. I, I think that really matters for Detroit. I mean, he's been, he, he's been a star. So I, that rattled me. Uh, I, I, I would have picked if you told me the, the lions were fully healthy. I'm like, I think everyone's going to pick the Rams. I like the lions. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think they're going to try to play it. We're all fine. I think a lot of their guys are banged up after that game. Minnesota was, fucking crushing dudes. So I, I, I tend to kind of like the Rams money line in this spot. Yeah, it's, it's, I completely you disagree. get it like plus plus one fifty. Yeah. I, I disagree with what Campbell did because number like you could argue, okay, you could, you had a 3% chance of getting the two seed, not worth it. Like you needed Dallas to lose to Washington and Philly to lose uh, to the giants. The, the Dallas just wasn't going to lose the Washington. And you also had to win the game. Like Minnesota was still in it. So the, that wasn't even a guarantee. And the main, like the difference between a three and a two, like the most likely case was going to be, okay, if you won, Dallas won, then Dallas is the two. Even if you lost, then you're the three, Dallas is still the two. Like you, I get maybe you get to the two because you want to keep golf from going outdoors where you just have no chance. But either way, you're either going to Dallas if you win or you're at home. Dal- um, Dallas was never losing to the football yeah, team. Commanders. I, yeah, I, so I, I completely disagreed there. And Khalif Raymond, too. I, I don't know. I, I like Detroit uh, as of now. I can I see the case for the Rams. But Detroit does what, two things really well. They can defend the run, which is huge. The basis of the Rams' offense is Kyron Williams. That's when it's really taken off. Now, they're going to hit their explosive passing plays. But if you can get pressure on Stafford, he's a different quarterback. Lions lead the league in pressure rate, lead the league in quarterback knockdown rate, lead the league in hurry rate. They just got a Lee McNeil back. He's huge. C.J. Gardner-Johnson. So they got some reinforcements on this defense. Now, their corners can't stay with Nakua and Cup. 
so Stafford's going to hit his plays, but I think they can pressure him. This crowd is going to be raucous. I also think that the Lions, like I think both offenses have major advantages here. Like the Rams, they can block Donald, and the Rams don't get pressure uh, unless Donald makes a play. They don't get any pressure whatsoever. So Goff's going to be comfortable, especially going up against this defensive scheme. So I think the Lions will move the ball. Campbell fourth down decisions are probably beat way heavily on this game because he's, he's going to go. You know he's going to go for it a couple of times. More than eighteen, let's roll, yeah. boys. So that that's going to be a major. Uh, that adds a lot of variance into this game. The one thing that you know, the first thing, this crowd is going to be bananas. bananas. So yeah, just the sound, the noise, that a couple of calls will probably go their way. Special teams in the playoffs are massive. The Rams special teams are impoverished. I mean, they are so bad because they have no depth whatsoever on their team because of everything, you know, they went after the Super Bowl yeah, and got yeah. it. And credit to them for you know, hitting on guys like Nakua, you know, Avila at offensive line and a couple other guys. Credit to McVay for, you know, he was about to retire and just take a take a break. And he's got them back into the playoffs. But because, because of their roster and like the lack of depth, their special teams are so bad. They, they don't have a kicker. Their punt, their coverage units are horrendous. That on the road is asking for trouble. It's cost them a couple games this year. Um, almost cost them the Giants game, cost them the Ravens game. Don't forget about the special teams. I think the Lions are going to win in front of the home crowd, but I can see the case for the Rams. It's You have Stafford, Nakua, and Cup against those corners. Uh, I think it's going to be a really fun game, but uh, I think I'm siding with the Lions. I, I think whoever wins, it's an incredible moment for either coach. If the yeah. Rams win, I, I thought the Rams were going to suck. I don't know where you stood. I, I mean, yeah. I thought they were going to draft in the top 10. I'm like, Stafford's falling apart. Now they not only made the playoffs, but like a legit six-seed playoff team, went on the road, won a game against a very talented team. And you could argue it's non-Super Bowl year. You could This could be Big Bay's second-best season. And if Dan Campbell wins a fucking playoff game for the Detroit Lions for the first time in three and a half decades or whatever, I mean – He's getting an enormous contract extension. Uh, he might be getting that anyway, but like you win a playoff game in Detroit. Are, are you kidding me? I mean, that's, that's, that never happens. I, I, I don't even vividly remember them. Honestly, I, I don't remember that game. I watched the Barry Sanders documentary when they won the playoff game. Like I was, I was pretty young. I was like, I do not remember this. Yeah. The, I, I, I'm yeah. The, it's going to be an amazing game. Uh, I can't wait to watch it. And I'll the Rams. I agree. I thought they're going to be bottom 18, no chance to playoffs. I thought it was just going to be Stafford throwing it to cup a million times a game. Their defense is going to be bad. Their special teams are going to be bad. Defense has been a little better than I thought, but they hit on guys. You know, they hit on some linemen, but Kyron Williams in the fifth round, I think two years ago, Nakua in the third round, one of the best rookie seasons of all time. I mean, that's how you can really, boost yeah. your team and one hitting on a couple draft picks like that. And uh, Staff- Staff- that Stafford, Stafford played like he was 27 again down the and stretch. And Stafford too. healthy too. Yeah. And turning back the clock uh, was obviously massive. So, uh, but I will say that they were, you know, they were one in six. If you remove the Niners game, resting their starters, they were one in six against playoff teams this year. Well, so Cowboys they, kicked their ass. The Ravens beat them, but they, that was probably, yeah, they were, they were loss. close in the Ravens game. Um, yeah. But when they stepped up in class this year a lot, they didn't fare so well and weren't necessarily the same team on the road. I mean, arguably should have lost to the Giants. They won a bunch of very close games. A lot of their analytical rankings, like they beat the shit out of the Cardinals and Seahawks four times, um, you know, the Saints. Um, so this is a team that's still, they, you know, I lost at home to the Steelers. So I'm not as high on the Rams as some, but their offense is cooking. This could turn when did they when did they play season. Cleveland? I don't even remember that game. Yeah, they played with Cleveland a month ago. They was it was like twenty to nineteen in the fourth. The it was Flacco's first start. Was that in L.A.? Yeah, Browns had a ton of injuries. Like Garrett got hurt, yeah, Ward yeah. didn't play. Um, so they were severely shorthanded. And then there was a couple. There was like a couple turnovers late that made the score look a little bit. But that was their only playoff win. Okay. Uh... This honestly, this could have been if if Houston wasn't a franchise, you could have put this Saturday afternoon. Uh, Philly, Philly had Houston. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I 
I understand like kind of going into the game, knowing just assuming Dallas is going to win, but the level of gutlessness from the Eagles in that effort, I mean, that that was pretty eye opening, especially given the way that their season was going. Th- this feels like all time implosion. I listen, I watched a decent amount of, of Tampa against Carolina. They do not look good either because Baker's injured. They're just, they're just not playing that well. So it's, it's hard to just think Tampa is going to beat them, but Philly can lose to anybody the way they're playing. I mean, you, you could not feel comfortable. I, I don't give a shit if you're Jeffrey Lurie placing a bet right now on the Eagles. I, I couldn't do it. I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to touch this game, but I, I under, I wouldn't touch Philly with a 10 foot pull. Yeah. It's Tampa or nothing for me, uh, especially at a field goal. This, this Eagles team is, I mean, they were very fortunate to be 10. And you think Siri, you're a Philly guy. Do you think Sirian, if he loses this game, because there's no way they could lose this game and it not be an ugly fashion. Whether it's a walk off field goal, whether it's getting your ass, regardless, you lose this game. Could he get fired? I think he next might week? be gone. I think I do too. Like, look at look at what the Eagles franchise has done. They've gotten rid of Super Bowl winning quarterback uh, coaches like Peterson, Andy Reid. They're not a uh, you know a, they're not Tom like and the Steelers. Steelers. No. Yeah, they will move on quick. And yeah, it's been a disaster with the. I mean, like either side of the ball like the defense they, they're they changing defensive coordinators they're naming matt patricia midway you know since they named matt patricia the defensive coordinator they've gotten worse they're 31st yeah. epa per play on defense since patricia took over i mean it's it's been a disaster i mean I, the, everyone is out of position they've also had injuries the offense is also a mess too they can't figure out teams blitzing against them aj the, the like just the vibes to everything in the locker room. Now you have AJ Brown who's hurt. We'll see what his status and how healthy he is. Devontae Smith's banged up. Hurts got banged up. Uh, you know, Swift hasn't had a hundred yard rushing game since uh the the Bucks game when they beat them earlier this season. It's a mess. Both sides of the, both sides of the field. I mean, and that's the longest I read today a funny stat is the longest stretch of a Eagles running starting running back not having a hundred yard game since Keith Byers in the early nineties who went like 131 games without a hundred yard game. Um, Jesus. But yeah, there were mess on both sides of the ball. Now the bucks aren't great. Uh, Baker's hobbled too. And they just want a shitty division. I will say in fairness, the Eagles like, all right, now they're in. Is it a chance for them to like reset? Everyone's written them off. They have the playoff pedigree. Uh, can they rally here? The Cowboys in the same situation last year, they laid, they were in the same situation the Eagles going into week 18. They had to win and then had the Eagles lose, but they knew the Eagles were probably going to win. And they went up to Washington and lost 26 to six. Dak was 16 to 37 through a bunch of pick sixes. Then they recovered and won in Tampa, I think on the Monday night game. So it's the same. And, well, and he had the great, he had the greatest game of his career. Did yep. he throw five touchdowns? Yep. Yeah. He looked perfect. So, but I just don't see that from this Eagles team right now. I could not bet them. I will say I, I bet I'm betting some Cade Otten, the Bucks tight end. He's not great, but he's their only tight end. He will be on the field most of the game. And the Bucks can't run the ball. They won't be able to run the ball in Philly. And so they're going to be in a lot of passing situations, passing downs. And the Eagles can still get pressure with their – so Baker's going to get rid of the ball quick, and Baker's hobbled. So I think he's going to look to Otten, and the Eagles cannot cover tight ends to save their life. On this, they're the worst worst defense in the NFL defending tight ends. Now they've had linebacker injuries. Reed Blankenship has fallen off a cliff. On this season, they they got up seventy six percent completion rate. Tight ends have averaged five catches for fifty yards. Jesus, and that includes the game against the Dolphins, who don't use their tight end and have no no yards. And since week eight. It's been even worse. Opposing tight end six catches on average for 58 yards. They've given up, I, I think, over the past – let me see. I have it here. They've given up 11 20-plus yard receptions over the past seven weeks to tight ends alone. So I played Otten, who I think is going to get some looks, and he's had 12 catches of over uh, 13 yards this year in 17 games. So I played – over 12 and a half longest catch. 
the split up was one 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 of my whatever I bet on a normal game. I split it up into three. Longest over catch, 12 and a half, over two and a half catches. The one I like the most is over 20 and a half receiving yards. Uh, I think he might be able to get that in, in one reception, but I think Baker's going to look to him a bunch. They're going to have to throw it a bunch. And the middle of the field, Eagles can't defend it. They're going to have to worry about Godwin and Evans. So I think Otten's going to have some opportunities here, and the Eagles just can't cover tight ends. You know what's crazy? If we get some upsets, right, if if the Rams beat Detroit and Philly were to implode and lose, you could argue the Cowboys get the easier second-round matchup than the 49ers because they would get the Bucks, and the Niners would have to play the Rams, who would be, yep. you have a ton of momentum. So that's yeah. something to keep an eye on. Yeah, there it's now because you want the Bucks to me. Like the Niners or Cowboys would 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 to me pick the Bucks over all these other teams, right? Of Probably course. including the Eagles, just because if if those guys get healthy, they they can give you problems. Yeah, it's you know the NFL. I shouldn't say never, but there's going to be upsets this week. Uh, yeah, it's just the way that it works. I if I could tell you which ones it would be, I'd be on an island somewhere not recording this with you even though i enjoy doing this but That's yeah right. i mean who knows i wouldn't be floored if the packers rams and bucks all won um and, and you know i would be a little bit more shocked if the steelers and dolphins both won but you know if the pat you tell me the the, the cowboys choke mccarthy choked the game away and love went off I wouldn't be completely shocked. And the Rams beat the Lions, so it could easily happen. And the Bucks beating the Eagles, yeah. So I wouldn't be shocked if all three underdogs um, in the NFC won. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be chaotic. Enjoy the games. we got three days of them. I prefer to two triple headers Saturday, Sunday, but you can't complain having an extra. I agree. I uh, totally agree. And I think – would you say Sirianni and McCarthy would be the two guys that if they were to lose, you, you never know Monday if if those guys are still employed? McCarthy with this team, with these expectations, yeah, if he goes down at home, some of these to the Packers, some of these guys yeah. available, I, I he and if me, he, he especially would. if he, yeah, I, yeah, he's he I think he's, he's got to win this. This is a must win for him. Must win game. You can you can. Even maybe lose to the Lions next week, but you can't go out in the first round at home. Jones will, I think, make I, a move. And yeah, Stucky, I don't, I don't think he can lose a home playoff game. I, I don't think he can lose the home games. He can I lose the Niners, but especially uh, not the first one. You can't. This would be he's one hundred percent fired. I think there would be problems if he lost in the second round to Detroit, to Philly, to you know. I, I, I think it'd be problems. He lose the Niners. He's going to be what seven point underdog in that game. Yeah, that's losable. I don't think you can't lose at home because if you're losing at home, you know, the whole point is to get these home playoff games, right? He did it a couple of years ago. Well, now two years later, he's in charge. He's calling the plays. This team's better in theory, right? So I, I think he's got to win the home games. I, that's my thing. Like if I could see Jerry, who's kind of been a little weird, you know, talking about him, he's like, he's under contract next year. It's not yeah, like he's got I, some I five-year right, deal. But <laughs> I think you're definitely right if he loses this weekend. And everyone in the AFC is safe. Um, Todd, Todd Bowles would be a 50-50. I'm yeah. not saying he should, but I'm just saying ownership's a little weird there, you know. They're bringing Baker back one more year. Yeah, Todd's probably safe. They'll probably, they'll probably keep him one more year. Uh, but, yeah, I think Sirianni, the two, two NFC East coaches – if they lose this weekend, could get better. Adios. Yep. Okay, Stucky, let's uh, let's have a weekend. Absolutely. Enjoy the games, and I'll uh, see you next week. See you, buddy.